Hi everyone and welcome to the Better Everyday YouTube channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Randy. So today we are going to be checking out the next episode in An Idiot Abroad. And I think last week I had said that this week we were going to go back to the Ricky Gervais show, but I decided I wanted to see the next Idiot Abroad first because I have watched, I think, two or three episodes of the Ricky Gervais show. But this week we're checking out Idiot Abroad Season 2, Episode 5, Meet a gorilla. I am excited, so without further ado, here we go. Before you die, it's things to do in your life. So loud. The intro on the show, for some reason, is so loud. It's it's just crazy. It's difficult. It gets more so quiet later once the show actually starts. But this intro is very loud. Told him that he gets I was trying to get it past the, the intro. Oh, there we go. That's better. Look at this. No, I will fix it. I'm sorry. I thought I had it past the intro, but apparently not. One, come face to face with mountain gorillas in their natural habitat. What a privilege that is. One of the most endangered species on the planet. One of our closest living relatives. 98% genetically identical to a human, a gorilla. Even more similar to you. What an amazing privilege that is. I'd like to see one. I've seen them, seen them in the zoo. Right. And they do impress me. Why do they impress you? How do they impress you? They just, um, just, just very human in the eyes. I, I think that would be such a meeting of minds. You'd come face to face uh -uh. with a mountain gorilla in its natural habitat. Both just there. Both nude amongst the foliage. I wouldn't be nude again. What is it yeah. with you nude? They don't like clothes. <laughs> and you are hairy all over. And I think you've got more chance of them seeing similarities. Not wandering about. In a, in a, like the woods, looking for apes, nude. Because <laughs> there's a point when that woods ends and then suddenly one creeps out and you've got me legging it. Nude. <laughs> nude. Hello, Carl, name's Steve here. Now, I know the gorillas you're going to see are in Uganda, but before you, you head over there, we wanted you to just explore a bit more of Africa. So we're going to start you off in South Africa because there's a, a couple of projects there we want you to, to take part in. There's a chap called Sipo, okay, he runs one of the local charities. Um, we've arranged for you to, to teach some local kids, build some huts. You've got a chance here to give something back, That's literally really get cool. your hands dirty. All right, mate? Just for fun. Charity? As, I mean, has it got worse? Is it me, as I've got older, does it seem like there's more and more stuff we've got to give to? When I was a kid, all I ever saw was like that kid wearing calipers outside a, a supermarket. It was like a, an iron model of a girl with calipers on her legs and a built-up shoe. And you, you put like 20p in it or whatever. That's all, that, was, that was being hassled for charity. Now you can't walk down the street without someone going, I need your help. <laughs> I think these people are sick and tired of people coming in from England with a camera crew. That's probably why they've not moved on. They probably want to build new houses and all that. They can't. They haven't got time. The crews keep turning up. If it's not Geldof, it's that Richard Curtis bloke or Lenny Henry cropping up. They can't get anything done. Super. Hey, Carl. How's it? Yeah, I'm all right. Hey, not too bad, not too hey. bad. <laughs> Hmm, Carl, welcome to Deep Snow. Okay. Let's go for it. So we can run. All right, who's the man in the back? It's your security. I need security. Yeah? I'm Carl. How are you doing? Just a normal handshake. How many kids will I be teaching? How many can you handle? Twelve. Twelve? <laughs> Is that you happy with that? That's a very distinct really. number. Very that's specific. the problem with charity, isn't it? It's never enough. <laughs> I mean, you just dropped me in here, everything's a bit of a shock to the system. But I've got a bodyguard, he's still with me, I'm in a primary school. How dangerous is this place? By sending me in to teach the local kids here, I, I think it's more of a hindrance. I know nothing. <laughs> I'm in a programme called Idiot Abroad. <laughs> Why do you talk about some of the places you've been? Yeah, but if I start going, yes, well, well, kids, um, China. They haven't got doors on the shitters. They'll go, well, we haven't. You've seen where they're living. What can I teach him? The children have chosen the topic, by the way. What is it? You're going to talk about risk. Risk? Mm-hmm. 
risk in general. You can just say to them whatever you think and whatever you know about risk. Afternoon, everyone. Okay, risk. Right, stop messing about at the back. Right, well, we shut the door, please, because that's also very risky, leaving the door open. Thank you very much. Um, what do you think risk is? <coughs> mm. Right. See, it's tough, this. Does anyone have any risks in the life here today? Yep, yeah, of course you can. Um, teenagers from pregnant. Is that a risk? How, how old is she to be worrying about that? 13. I didn't worry about people having kids when I was 13. Do they honestly want to know about risk? Yes. In sex? Yes. In sex. You understand that? That's what we're talking about here. Yes. Honestly, I thought I was coming in to talk about Umpty Dumpty. Right, OK, here you go. The thing It'd is... be awkward. I haven't got kids, just so you know. I'm 30... 38 now. I haven't got any children. So, why do you not have a kid? Because of you are old. I'm old? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it means you don't have a wife. No, I have. I've got a girlfriend. For 17 years. Oh, No, she's not 17. I've been with her for 17 years. <laughs> All right? OK, don't rush into having kids. What you should do, focus on getting a job. Meet a woman, meet a man. Have a good time for a bit, but be careful. Wear a condom. Yeah? Yes. Right, I've covered that. What else do you want to know? <laughs> you cut your hair, you... No, it's not cut. This isn't a style. I'm bald. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't our... I don't say, can you just take that bit off and leave that? <laughs> do you want to play on a bike? Yes. Yeah? Doo -doo. This is a... That would have been such an awkward conversation with... A group of kids look like 10 kids that are not your own. 13 years old or so. Oh my goodness. This is a risk. That's risky. Never do that. Never do it one handed. Never do that. That's like a trick fight. I learned from Ricky Javier that you are good in DIY. Come on. So I'm looking for the guy for DIY. I'm your man. So you can do it. Geldof. He did a lot, didn't he? He, was, he got involved in all this in the 80s, and he's got sick of it. He's moved on. I don't hear about him coming here anymore because you feel like, how, what can you do? What can you do? How can you sort this out? Who? You're going to break down a house and rebuild it from scratch. Oh, cool. Is this just water, or is that... Uh... Everything that you're not thinking of. We we'll need to meet the family first. Carl. How are you doing? Hello. You are, you are. Little fella. Hello. Hello. This is where it starts. Give loads to charity. Helping old people. Deaf kids. Save the kids. If anything, I'd say I'm single-handedly causing the world's population problem. Because I'm saving everyone. I'm like Superman. <laughs> Sure, we got the right house. Quite happy helping out. I help anyone out. Someone needs a bit of help. But me turning up for one day, doing a bit of DIY, is that really going to sort this out? That's it forever. Look how many need to be replaced. 600,000 people live here, he said. Apparently, the rules are you're meant to build your own. But the people we're helping today are ill, so they need help to build their house. I don't know where they went. I sort of shook their hands and said, oh, I'm going to build your house. They disappeared. Got out for the day. He's been, he's been lying on a bed in the corner there, just... Uh... Has he? Can you imagine being ill and there's someone coming out and knocking your house down? Well, hang on a minute. Just leave me, let me be. I want peace and quiet. He's got the builders in making the right racket. That would be hard to watch someone else do that and not physically able to contribute. Right balls up on that one. Contribute. Got the 
greatest view, isn't it? It's alright, though, isn't it? That one looks more sturdy. Got some framing in the window. Work. Yeah, I got it done. I got the hut done. But there's about another 600,000 to do, so I, d I don't quite understand what I was meant to get out of it. All you're doing is you're just helping others because that's a good and honourable thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, but I do that. When I get back, I'm going to show you my bank statement, and you'll see all this stuff flying out left, right, and centre, helping all these other charities. But Carl, don't you understand the difference between a little bit of money dribbling out of your account once a month? And actually getting down there, your hands dirty. Right, big difference. When, 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 was, when was the last time you were over here, Steve, getting your hands dirty? When were you, when, I, I can't remember you saying, when, when were you here again? I'm asking you because you know, you're on the ground floor. What I've done, I've built a nice new shiny hut where the old hut was. There's still a river of shit whizzing past it. You know what, mate? You are right. You changed my mind, Carl. All these years I've been thinking it was good to help other people. But you know what, talking to you, no, I'm not saying that. What have I been saying? I'm just telling you what I've seen with my own eyes. What more can I do? I have to say, uh, a lot of times I appreciate Carl's unique approach and perspective, way of looking at things. Maybe he notices something or sees it in a way I won't. I see what he's saying there, but I have to side with Steve on that one because it almost sounded here like he was saying because there's 600,000 more homes to rebuild. What's the point? Like you have to start somewhere, and it's very possible that his assistance rebuilding that house made a huge difference. Like maybe without his assistance, that wouldn't have been rebuilt for a little bit longer. I don't know, but. I'm sad that he didn't get that takeaway that I helped, you know, my fellow man spent less than a day of time and made a difference somewhere in this world. It makes me sad that he didn't get that from it, you know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's just a bit of frustration. And I just feel that just because I build one hut, it's not enough. Better than nothing. Here's something. Do you know I had an argument with him once over 50 pence? If we're talking about Steve and money, 50 pence. I got some coffees, walked over, he said, where's my change? So that's in my pocket. Oh, that's mine. And we had a big, honestly, not messing about, a big full-on blown argument over 50 pence. That's the reality, but he won't let that in. He'll go cut that out. 50 pence! Might have been a principal. I got a text from Steve this morning just saying that he wants me to meet up with Seco again, you know, that charity bloke, to uh, take part in some local activity. I don't know what it is. That's, that's all he said. Welcome to Soweto Cooling Towers. Very iconic. And you look at the middle of the bungee jumping. It's a bungee. Ooh. What was what's the what's the thinking? We've done this. We've done it. We went all the way to New Zealand, didn't do it. Oh Jesus. That's uh... What up? I'm not doing it. Let's go and have a look, mate. There's a really lovely view of Soweto up there. And I know you're game. Just go up there and have a look, see the township. Oh, there you are. Push right off the edge. <laughs> no, nobody will push you. I'm going to do this. It's crazy. How's it going? Um, I'm, I'm a bit pissed off because I'm on the edge of a bungee again. Yeah, I think you'll feel really good about yourself because you have one more chance and you do it this time. Is he going to jump? Oh, God almighty. It's pointless. It's pointless. I don't want to do it. If people want to do it, then great, but there's no reason for me to do this. There's no big payoff. Oh, what if I gave you a reason? OK, if you jump, I'll buy a hut for someone. How much, mate? The 500 quid. 
Do you know what? I'd rather I'd rather pay the 500 quid out of my own money than to do this jump. I'll raise you. I'll, I'll buy two hats if you jump then. Where's this going to end then? He's got more money than me. <laughs> I, I tell you what, I'll pay the grand. Let's leave it there. Three hands. Fuck's sake. Three hands. Well, you're making me look all right, twat, eh? No, I'm not. You are, because I don't want to do it. I'll pay that, I'll pay that. This is my last offer, OK? I'll buy five huts. <laughs> if you jump, you've bought five huts, basically, and you feel good about yourself, uh... and you've made me look a twat. Think about it. Think about it. Somebody tell me, he says quid. I've heard him say quid multiple times and pence. And I'm more used to hearing euro or pounds. And I think somebody commented once and told me what quid was. I just need to look it up. I used to be good about currencies and exchange when I was doing a lot more finance type studies and things in my everyday, but I'm not so much anymore. So quid, I'm not, I don't know. I don't know. I hope he jumps. So you're going to do it, right? Look at you. Hmm? You're going to do it, aren't you? You're it's gonna not do that it. far. Look. All the work yesterday has that gone out the window. I built a hut yesterday. You should be over the moon about that. <laughs> it's good, man. It's not so bad. As you can see my face, I'm happy, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. It's not going to happen. To get it. To get it. Do it like that. What do you mean you don't have to do it like that? As if I would be. It's a definite no, honestly. It's not for me. Let's leave it as that. If I tell Ricky I didn't do it, are they going to keep doing this? Are they going to set something up again whilst I'm here? Oh, he definitely didn't do it. Just thinking, give him a call. Say, yeah, I did it. Don't lie. All right, All right how's it going? How was it? Mental. Did you do it? You yeah. jumped? Yeah. Well, I had to, didn't I? So, uh, yeah. Well done. Were you, were you scared, though? No, no, not really. I just, you know, it was one of the things, it just was focused. I just thought, I've got to do it, let's get on with it. I just was like, right, it's a tape well rolling, I'm doing this. Bang, done, bosh. Get these five huts, let's get these people happy here. They were over the moon. Oh, well done. Tell Steve, yeah? Just let him know, because he was having a go at me yesterday and all that. I'm sick of it. So just say, Carl yeah. did it, he's raised the money, we've got the five huts, everyone's happy. I would, I would ask Steve to chip in, but do you think there's any point? Well, it's pointless. I said that. OK. If you did it, um, I've arranged a caravan for a little treat, because I know how much you like them. Um, so not only have they got their hearts, and um, you feel brilliant, but um, you can uh, stay in a caravan now. That's all right. I'm happy with that. I can't believe you lied to Steve. No, Even no, if it was for good. Right to do that, boy. Shut him up now, isn't it? That's the end of it. I've done a bungee, as far as he's concerned. No. Ricky's happy. Kids have got the huts. I am happy. I've got my caravan. So it's a, it's a nice lie, isn't it? It's not an evil one. I can go where I want to go, can't I? Stay where I want to stay. So I'm thinking of stopping off at a place where uh, a couple have got a hippo as a pet. Oh, cool. Hey, God, please to meet you. Come here. Please to meet you. Come here. It's mad, isn't it? I saw it on the internet. It's loads of clips. This one's in about the front room. It's mental. Quite fancy getting a pet. But it's just that thing of airs going everywhere. I suppose that's a good thing with a hippo, you don't get airs on the sofa. <laughs> it's bloody massive, isn't she? When she cuts out of the water. Oh my god, it's letting its own. I've lost my salif. That is mental. That is mad. My dad didn't let the cat in the lounge. Fucking hippo in here. It can't get through there, can it? No. 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 Would you like to feed your beans? You don't have to throw it in. She's calm, she's relaxed. There you go. Wonderful. That was excellent. 
Oh, what a lovely little baby. It's not little. Mm. Donkey jizz. Thank you, Jessica. Donkey jizz. Donkey jizz. One more. Oh, I'll keep messing. Oh. Making a right mess of your kitchen. Oh, you got a hippo in it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Sue's out from the back. Never see you. Can't use that. Hippo in an house. Do you have insurance? Mm -hmm. So if it knocked your plasma over, are you covered? No. It's like some sort of mad dream or a cartoon. When you think about what I've been put through, and this is the maddest thing I've seen in 38 years. Every night, she has a aromatherapy body massage. What it makes me realise is, is that I'm quite lucky with Suzanne. She asked for a cat, she's asked for a dog. I've gone, no, we haven't got the space. Shirley's got a hippo. That is so wild and yet so sweet. Wow. Yes, I'll wait on a Sunday morning. Jesus Christ. You can't be lying in bed all the time, right? There's charity stuff that needs sorting out. Sipo's <laughs> been calling me. The guy, you know, who does the charity stuff, raising money for the hooks. Have you paid it yet? Hello? Oh, what do you want? Well, I'm just calling up, just letting you know I'm having a good time. Just, uh, just had a little shower, had some breakfast, sat here with a hippo. Uh, yeah. yeah, honestly. I'd say if you're seeing animals, this is the best way to see it. In yeah. someone's house, have a cup of tea if you want it. Biscuits on, on the go. It's just sat here now. It's well happy. Is it happy, though? What do you mean? Of course it's happy. It doesn't just live in the house, though, does it? No, it wanders off, wanders in, watches a bit of telly. Wild animals should be in the wild, Carl. Whatever. I mean, don't be worrying. I'm off to see the gorillas. I'm not going to bring one home. <laughs> Sipo again. Hiya, Carl. The money still hasn't transferred into our account. Give it a chance. Ricky tells me you're up near Jessica the Hippo and there's a township that could do with your help there. They also need more huts. Let me know. Ricky's just taking the piss. He can't even be asked to wind me up anymore. He's getting someone else to do it. Is that what it's going to be like for the rest of the trip? We're in the shit here. Who can we call? I've got Carl's number. Have you? Anything happened to him? Honestly, I feel like the fourth emergency service. This episode feels so different. Number one, because Carl lied about doing the bungee jump, and that makes me really sad. But also um, that he has a truck and a little camper that he's pulling that he can stay at. That's very different from a lot of the episodes that I've seen. I don't think I've ever seen him have a, you know, a place to stay on the go. Especially season one, he was staying in all kinds of places. So he's he's got more advantages, so to speak, in this season. And... Already, he's just gotten so many experiences in the first 20 minutes of this episode, you know. And as far as Ricky not paying for those homes, I wonder if he found out that Carl didn't jump and so he's not paying. But he should let the person know because the person's asking about, you know, where the money's at. Anyway. All right. All right. It's Carl. How's it going, mate? Yeah, yeah, not bad. Not bad. I'm a lot happier now with this uh, caravan. What's the glory days when you used to holiday in Wales? Well, I tell you, it's pretty close. This is the happiest I've been on the, doing this bucket list. I'm talking this, mate. Honestly, I have not heard you this chipper and this chippy possibly forever. So, uh, you got out for me today. Probably makes a big Probably difference when I have somewhere to sleep. The end of Belly Tribe. End of Belly Tribe. They're going to teach you their painting techniques, all right? And in exchange, you get the privilege of cooking a meal for the king. The king? Oh, you're actually going to be cooking for royalty. I've never met a king before. What do I cook him? I don't know, mate. Whatever you think would express Carl Pilkington. It's the first dinner party I've ever done this. Things to just keep it simple, cheese. I want to cook him something that I'd eat at home. I don't want to try and be fancy. Oh, yeah. Even the owl's going, bloody hell. Cooking for a king tonight. He'd eat beans. I 
wonder where oh, he's yeah, going. Oh yeah, another tribe. Ah, oh, fine. They're not that different. I mean, you know, the clobber that they wear and all that sometimes, you kind of go, what are you playing at? But, take that away. They're just people, aren't they? And most people like beans. <laughs> beans, beans, a magical fruit. I like all this. This is good. Very nice. Very nice, that. Colourful. Very colourful. Hey. Um... I'm not allowed to paint the caravan, though, am I? It's a hired, it's not my caravan. It comes yeah. off with water. Really? Can you wash it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it comes off, just because, like I say, it's not mine. But you know, that'd be good then. All right, yeah, let's do that. Do you need help getting up when you've got these on? Because ca I imagine it's difficult getting up. <laughs> it's like having guttering on your legs. <laughs> sure you're all right? <laughs> Right, okay. Just one side, maybe. Yeah. Just a little bit at a time. Let's, you know, let's not go mad. So what? I don't understand this paint. No, there's not a paint. Countdown. 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 Cow. Cow dung. Yeah. We're using cow shit. Yes. No, oh, I'm not seeing cow shit. That's lovely paint. You come over here with a bucket of shit to put my caravan here. That looks nothing like the art over there. Oh. It's nothing like it. This yes. is like a dirty protest. Uh, police. Your mum's been at it again. Shit all over number 18. <sighs> well, you must also do that. You must dip in your hand. It stinks when you wake it up like that. <sighs> Keeps hitting me. Is that okay? Yes, it's nice. That's nice. All the toilets I've been in since I've been here have looked like this, so I realise now it's art. Got so really well. It's flicked off. I'm going to be cooking for a king. Got my hands in a load of shit in here. Looks like a piece of pizza. Brilliant. Uh -huh. Luke, can I go and wash my hands? <laughs> That's the king. Hello. I'm Carl. Yes. Yeah? Good one. Good one. I'm just preparing your food for you. Yes. How many people, um, are you eating with tonight? These people. All these are eating as well? Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. OK, you go and do what you got to do. He's wearing a full cheetah on his back. Just give him fucking kitty cat, not beans. What's this on the floor? Nibbles to start. Shortbread biscuits. I don't know if they've tried them. It's a new thing for them. Ooh, yeah. Wiggly worms. Some crisps. Ooh, yeah. In case they're sort of fitness freaks. Apples. Crisp, biscuit, fruit, wiggly worm. Quite sour. I just heard like a gunshot. Might be one of my neighbors. Once in a while, though. Yeah. Oh, fucking hell! Toast. Toast. Beans. Toast. Can't you just help us here? You can see I'm struggling here. I can't I'm do impressed. this. I can't do it, Luke. Fucking hell. Just kicks out the shit toast on Toast and that. cheese? Sorry about the delay. Yeah. That toasted Meat. cheese? Meat? Yeah. I the just... The man is always seeing me eat. He uh, eat he the meat. Yeah, he needs meat. Uh, this isn't it. There is also a pudding. Oh, they want to know what it's called. Cheese on toast with beans. Yeah, so it's like a Geldof toasted cheese. fed the world. It's a fucking nightmare, it is. Just get down the corral. Uh, <laughs> pudding? 
chocolate, uh, sponge, custard. Thank you. Quite warm. Oh, God, I'm knackered. No wonder Rams is always swearing. Yeah? Who does? <laughs> I haven't got them off. I bought one box of custard. <laughs> they don't want any more. He's moved on to a plate of meat. Some woman's come out. She's had more time, though, hasn't she? Yours looks fucking brilliant compared to that Forget shit. Forget the meat, girl. <sighs> My husband's the type of guy that needs meat at every meal. Look, I've sorted out for you to join a major animal conservation project. Oh, beautiful. They're going to be relocating wild rhinos. Uh, the range is called Lee, and they're training you up. Give you a real wild well Oh, cool. Right. See you later. I love. I don't get him at times. So How many, many animals, animals do I need to see? He's got I've still got a face to grill. What's that there? What's what animal is this? That's the uh, dung of a blue wildebeest. It's a. Uh, well, you don't have to pick it up. It's pretty old dropping. Yeah, quite old. Are you joking? Are they olives? What are you doing, licking it? Just taste this it. It's a way to determine the age of the dropping. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> what I'm doing is I'm determining the freshness of the dropping. And it can be determined just by, by the taste of it. Well, it's our last resort. That's, I mean, yeah, sure, that's just you a keep standard little tester. It. You don't want to follow the wrong set of footprints, do you? Oh, how often a week are you licking shit? Yeah. Boomy. Taste it. Won't hurt you. Get your finger in there, but and then you can kind of get a bit of a, a taste of it, you know? Things to do before you die. Stick a finger in a lot of shit. Got some? You taste it, it's a little bit sweet, I and mean, then we'll find some later on that's even fresher and it won't be so like sweet. wine tasting. Kind of, I suppose, the same kind of principle. You get it? Do you know You Bet with Matthew Kelly? Do you get that over here? No. It's a programme on the telly. Say if there was piles of shit mm -hmm. and I blindfolded you and went, what's that? Would you, could you tell just by that what animal it is? <laughs> I'd give it a go. It's not a skill to be proud of. <laughs> so now we're going to head into the area where the rhinoceros has been located. Why have we got a shift there? Well, this particular rhinoceros bull is holding a territory which is full of young females that are actually, many of them are his daughters. Ooh. They're safe and sorry. They're the weirdest looking thing on the planet, aren't they? I mean, there's some people who think God created oh, stuff like that. Well, look at it. Would he really? Would he really design something as gorgeous looking as that? What are they doing? And don't look at me. Mm. We've given the rhino the injection, stressing its head on a tree, messing about with it a bit, and then they walk it over to a truck, get it on the back of the truck, get out of this tribe. Because apparently I've sort of had it away with its own daughter, which isn't good. You kind of get div rhinos running around. Oh. Take it to another sort of group of rhinos. It can have it away with them. That's it, isn't it, really? It's not going to miss it. I don't want to get this close to a gorilla Family? unless this fella's here sticking an injection up his arse. I mean, yeah. we could do that, couldn't we? Knock it out, have me sat with it. Like it. Like it. Biggest thing, second biggest thing on the planet. Yeah, there's a fact for you if you want it to look good. What's the biggest thing? Elephant, isn't it? Second, that's just... the. It is. Don't, why do you question everything? I, was, I know some facts. I think you've been whale watching on this series. I think he means land animals. I got a text from Suzanne. I just was saying, oh, how's it going? She's still always stressful. I'm moving office. I was moving a fucking rhino. He definitely cusses more this season. Oh, I 
Viacom. Um, no, you, you can't. Uh, there is a market where they sell a lot of second-hand clothes that have been donated by charities. So uh, meet your guy, this guy called Bam, and he'll be by a white van at the entrance. Look at it. Look at it. Quite a nice gesture if you buy up some clothes that you could take with you on the trek to see the gorillas. All right, mate. Bye. No, fell for Bam. Bam. A man called Bam in a what in a van. You Bam? I come. So you're welcome to Uganda. Um, yes. All right. You're deep in the forest. You need something like a jacket, a heavy jacket. Heavy jacket. Yeah, and uh, khaki or cordros. That's, oh, that's what I'm going to get. I mean, is that a priority when I'm going to see a gorilla? What pants am I going to wear? That market looks like I could be there all day. I'm not really much of a shopper. I don't really have the money for shopping anyway. But I love buying things, specifically clothes, second hand because you can, it's more affordable. It's a lot more affordable. And I just, I would love to shop there. I'd be there all day. So I need a pair of cords. Mm -hmm. Ricky wants to do it naked. There's no way I'm going naked. Gorilla's in the mist. She had clothes on. David Attenborough. When he was rolling about with him, having a wrestle. So I, I'm not doing that. So if that's if it's if it's wear the cords or not, I'll wear the cords. I don't even know why you're yeah. filming me Didn't shopping. Be Honestly, I sometimes think you're making a different program to me. Let's buy these. That's um, seven thousand. Seven thousand. Uh, how much is that in pounds? One pound sixty, mate. One pound sixty for a pair of pants. Yeah. That's really good. What else have they got? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do need a long sleeve. It's brilliant. This place is about to go on my here. bucket list. No, I've always got a problem with the boiler. Got that, innit? Oh, just ten more oh. minutes. Just have a look around. Trainers. Yeah, they're good, then. You like it? Yeah, I do, yeah. How about if I just do a swap? Oh, you got a Adidas? Let's go. Got to go, mate. Hey, look, they've got a pool table. That's the only oh, name brand really anything I own. To be honest, I didn't have in mind shopping about buying cords. Rules have changed. How fun. It looks like he had a really good time there. Sisters, you are welcome. You are welcome to our country, Uganda. Hi, Hi boys. I've been spent too long in the market. Um, probably should have told you you've got a 12-hour drive to get to the uh, <laughs> national forest. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, it's easier than just sitting in the van, chilling out. 12 hours. Hard to work, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I wish you all the best of luck to stay on this Gorera Forest camp. Piss me off at times. Have you thought about what you're going to say? No. To, to the viewers when you're out there with the gorillas? I don't know. See how it goes. Why are you worrying about that? No one's going to be expecting a great speech from me anyway, are they? Everything's been said that can be said about a gorilla. Then why are we doing it? It's supposed to see one. How long's this trek? Three hours. You are kidding me. We're walking another three hours. Oh, what mate. exercise for you? I'm just hoping it's, you know. It's worth it. Cora nest closer here. I've just smelled the way it is. You can smell a gorilla's nest? Yes, we can. And it makes sure that he leaves the pool so that no one will use it anymore. Do you need to um, taste it to see how near they are? No, you don't. We can see it's fresh. The leaves are wet. Why are you jumping straight into 
Stick your finger in it. <laughs> we are getting close to Gurlas. We're not though, you've been saying that. We've been going for hours. I'm excited for him to see a Gurlas. Five minutes. Five minutes. So exciting. How long now, Dave? Seven minutes. He said seven minutes. Less than ten minutes to Gurlas. We are getting much closer to them. He originally said three hours. This is hours. how you imagined it. I think no. they're not moving at their normal no, speed. I didn't. I did, I've not... Oh, fucking hell. No, you twat. Don't talk to me. Honestly, don't... Dennis, it's not like that. A fucking traffic's got hold of me. For sake. Dear me, I did. My feet are hurting. My toes are being crushed with these boots. My socks are wet. Got headache coming on. Uh, they have started moving towards where we passed. No, so, are you saying the gorillas are going back to where we started? Yes. That's why Diane Fossey saved with them, isn't it? She you. couldn't be arsed. She did the trek. I said bollocks are going back. It's easy to live with them. This is an indication that we are much close to the gorillas. This is gorilla poo. I've seen it. This one has been one of the wonderful tracks. Wonderful? Yeah. Okay. I may say 10 out of 10. Oh, my like ET. That is wonderful. That's a big one, isn't it? Shall we start with our smaller one? Putting that's it. How many gorillas are there in the world? We have got 720 mountain gorillas living in the whole world. 720? That's nothing like that's you could put low. the world's gorillas on one flight. Yeah. They take up more than one seat though. Alright. You can get a lot if they had standing. If it wasn't taking off. And, and there was no sort of rules. You could put some in business class and all the rest of it. You could get them all on it, which made me realise that that is a bit of a problem. Not yeah. that that is a problem. I'm... That, that's a very low number. Good hand up. To me, anyway. Makes me uneasy. Why is it so low? David, should have sit down. People poach gorillas, is that an issue? Hello. All right. What are you been doing? Well, it was the gorillas thing today, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Did you see one? Yeah, I saw, a, saw a family of them. Uh... Bit of communication. That must be amazing. <laughs> well, no, not really. All right, headache. I've got mozzie bikes on my head. Ten hours it was in total to get there and back. Really? Walking. Wow. In mud, socks wet, covered in shit. I got right. there, she wanted me to sort of give some quote as to what I was feeling like. I couldn't think of anything. You got little ears, long arms, short legs. This is your speech. Wow. You, you, you are just like Attenborough. That is just like Attenborough. Yeah, but he's, he, I think it's all to do with the accent. If Attenborough said that, if he went, I mean, they've got little ears, people go, oh, that's good. I think it's because I, I'm northern, yeah. people go, he sounds like a right dickhead. <laughs> it's not easy, is it? It's not easy. Nettles up my arse. I'm trying to think of something worthy to say. I just think, at the end of the day, I tell you what, don't say anything. Sometimes you can say it best when you don't say anything at all. Ronan Keaton said that. Let's, let's, let, yeah, there you go. Let's take the words of Ronan Keaton here. I say it best when I say nothing at all. Oh. Oh, I'll put my hands down because there's shit everywhere. I mean, you know, I know that the trip was all about the gorillas, but I reckon I've made a lot of difference in Africa. You sorted that thing out for me to build a hut. I've done that for them. Yeah. I taught kids. Yeah. I cooked for the king. 
and his mates. I shifted that rhino, that's another charity act. You finally did the bungee jump, which is pretty amazing, considering no, how adamant you were at the beginning, you would never do it. But that's what, that's what, mm, that's what I was going to say, though. Because I've been doing a lot of charity work, I just want to finish this trip by uh, sort of completing it, and I'll pay the two and a half grand when I get back, and then that way it's all part no, of... No, no, no. No, I don't mind, that's no, what I'm going to no, do. No, no, I want to, honestly. I want to. No, 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 you did it. No, I'll pay it. You did the jump. You did the jump. I didn't do it. I didn't do the jump. I didn't do the jump. What do you mean? I didn't do it. I didn't do the jump. What, the bungee jump? Hmm. But what, when... How were you going to get away with it? Because I could see the footage of you not jumping. No, but I got the di I got Luke, the director, to put me out on and do the jump. But his hat came off, so you can see that he's not bald, so he didn't work. <laughs> Bye, baby. She's like one of those dumbest criminals ever. <laughs> like, I can't even be you because you are so useless. Well, we can split the two and a half grand then. No, 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 no. You're paying it. You didn't do the jump. Yeah. That's hilarious. So now, not only are you made a complete twonk of yourself, twonk. showing that you're a coward and a liar, you're two and a half times down! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing! <laughs> that's, oh, that's yeah. the worst day ever! <laughs> you, you sure you saw the critters? I'm not going to get it back and it's Luke in a fucking fur coat. <laughs> Next time on an oh, Idiot I don't want to see the next time. I like to be surprised. If I watch the next time, then I kind of go in with some idea of what's happening. And I like to be surprised, aside from the title, you know, Meet a Gorilla. But there was so much in that episode that wasn't about meeting the gorilla. There was just so much. I really liked that episode. I liked that there were a lot of charitable-focused activities and we got to see a pet hippo we got to see a pet hippo and the rhino that they relocated because it was doing things with its family members seems like it would be sad to leave your family members but you know maybe i don't know and then he finally saw the gorillas which were beautiful beautiful animals i really enjoyed that um, I don't know what more to say, except I look forward to the next one. I think somebody said that the next one, episode 6, was all Americans and maybe not the best representation of Americans based on some of the comments that people have left about episode 6. Could be completely wrong. I'll find out, won't I? Um, anyway, thank you for tuning in, and I will see you next time. Have a good one.